Hey, what's going on? Welcome back to Street Lines Podcast. Today, I have a special guest, my first interview with a sportscaster. Mr. Alfonso, how you doing today? So, I appreciate you having me on. Hey, come on now. You know, I got to have you on. The <laughs> Boys of the Championship Wrestler. The first question I have is, so you from Maryland, right? Yeah. So tell me about how Maryland was growing up in your younger years. Um, I like kind of stuck to myself for the most part because uh, the neighborhood that I went, that, that grew up in it was like the best neighborhood in the hood okay, okay you know what i'm saying it was like one of those so well, i didn't really go outside and do a whole bunch of stuff like that but i grew up in like little league uh football things like that my dad like got me outside doing stuff like that instead of like being in the neighborhood so well how old he was when you first started playing the sports you wanted football uh, i mean i was like in elementary school i was like in fifth grade okay, yeah okay. last time i played was like eighth grade oh, okay um and then high school, I tried out for the teams. I didn't make it. I hadn't hit my growth spurt yet. I didn't hit my growth spurt until 11th grade. So how old, I mean, not old, how tall were you before you, before you hit this growth spurt, before uh, you got to Steph Curry height? I was five foot something. <laughs> and then, like, I think, like, I think probably by 11th grade, I hit probably, like, six foot one. Oh, okay, okay. And now I'm six foot two, so I've grown, like, an inch since then. Okay. Um, but... Like, man, it's crazy because it's been such a long time since I was short at all, you know. Yeah, I got to live so, through that every day, so. Yeah. <laughs> Vertically challenged, bro. Yeah. That's, that's what so, did you think about sports casting growing up? And what was your first career that you thought about you was going to be before you got into this sports casting? Man, when I was like four, I thought I was going to be a firefighter. Or something. Firefighter? Yeah. And then so when I was playing Little League, I thought I was going to play football. So oh, yeah. Playing, obviously. And then when I didn't make the teams, um, I was in like the science and tech program in school. Uh, I hated that. And then I was in drama class, which I love, which taught me like improv, which is how I'm so quick on my feet now when I'm like on set, oh, like singing and stuff. Um, like I, can, I can think of stuff on the fly because I took that class. So then I thought I was gonna be an actor. Right. Uh, and then funny thing happened. Um, I was watching this YouTuber, his name's Mr. Hurricane on YouTube and he did he does like sports casting over video games it's weird he'll oh, like record the video oh, game he'll yeah. play Madden but then he'll like present it like as live play by play oh nice. and like you follow you basically follow the entire series you follow the story and stuff and it's cool he's built like this over 10 years I've been watching this dude he's built like this universe of like different players and stuff and it was cool he'll take a player from like an old video game like say he played like Madden 13 oh, right. and there was a running back he had that was really good He'll take that player and he'll start playing SEO like 14 or something. And he'll be like, yeah, the head coach of this team I'm creating is blah, blah, blah from Madden 13 or whatever. And that's how he keeps everything connected. So it's pretty cool. But he was the first person that saw do it. And I tried it and I was like, oh, snap, I'm actually pretty good at this. So oh, then, sure. Yeah, the rest is history. Okay. So I know you was in the military. You was in the Air Force. What was your specific job before I get into my question? What was your Weapons. Weapons. Uh, I loaded bombs and missiles bunch of dangerous stuff when yeah. F-16s um it was it wasn't chill but it was cool <laughs> it, it was it was fun it was okay. a job so from your air force tell me about how do you take your experiences from the air force to the civilian life how did you take your experiences when you got um, out what did you learn the most honestly about? when i first got out it was rough like i had that better experience where oh, you're right. trying to like figure yourself out sure. and stuff go through a little bit of depression but i got myself out of it pretty quick um like I guess I took you can't really rattle me right like I'm unshakable because I don't care enough anymore like because I've been through more stressful stuff than anybody can probably ever throw at me so like somebody walk Dan Patrick walking into the studio while I'm doing my thing doesn't phase me I you don't, still I don't work care here, right? I don't care that he's there you know what I'm saying respect respect right, right. of course but like I don't care that he's there I don't care about the tours that come through um, I don't care if they mess with my prompter during my during my show, I don't care. I, I I couldn't care less because I worked near an exhaust that could have killed me. Right. I worked with live bombs that could have killed me. That's right. You think I'm a flinch because you took my prompter down? <laughs> hey, you right about I, that. I don't care about that stuff. So yeah. like, like it, it it helped me just deal with pressure better than the average person does. Like I see how the average person deals with pressure. Right. It's not it's not great. You know what I'm saying? Sure. But like. Um, like veterans are built different. Like I don't know, you know, we got. I'll say that we're, yeah. we're built we're built different than the average person is, and uh, we can handle stuff a lot better without crumbling. Right. 
under it. Plenty of schools in the world, or let me say United States, full sale. Wow. All right, yeah, I figured you were gonna ask. No, that was coming. <laughs> it was a 20-month program, bro. True. Without, no, without none of the BS, you know what I mean? Like, everything, for the most part, that you do at this school, you have a few classes that you have to take for this to be accredited university and stuff. And for, you know, that's why we have our math and physics and all right. that stuff here. But for the most part, when you are going to class, you're doing it specifically for the thing that you want to do. Right. I'm not wasting four years of my life. Exactly. I'm spending 20 months here, 20 quality months here, learning, grinding, and then going to my first job. I always wanted to go to Full Sail, but I couldn't afford it until I got out and got the GI Bill. You know, Shout out to the GI Bill. Yeah, Shout out to the Bill. Yeah. 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 So, uh, why Full? I mean, it really wasn't even a hard decision to come to Full Sail. Number one, I'm living in Orlando, Florida. <laughs> right. Like, Big O. What? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Um, <laughs> I left in the middle of winter from Maryland. Oh, yeah. okay. I was like, man, this is such a great decision. <laughs> Beaches, I left, I left short, snow. Look at you, you got your, Look, man, got your evenings on. I left snow and ice on the floor and all, yeah. all types of stuff to come down here, and it was palm trees and sunshine. Okay, so that's an easy decision. Let me want to take you back in school a little bit because I know you're two weeks out. So, intro to sports broadcasting. Shout out to Mr. Rutledge, by the way. So, when you had that assignment at the end of the month, and you had to sit in that chair for the first time and actually do the work. Didn't Talk, it didn't, tell me about the mental. It didn't phase me. Not at all. <laughs> like, what game did like, you? What game well, you chose? I think I did. Uh, you know, I can't even remember, bro. I really can't even remember. I wish I could remember right now. I, I know it was a football highlight. Cle I did, oh, it was, uh, it was uh, it. Texans Colts. Oh, Texans. yeah, yeah, yeah. I did the yeah, Andrew yeah. Luck and uh, Deshaun Watson game. Sure. They, they both like went off in that game. Um, it was, it was nothing to me because I had already been running my own show out of the studio for like six months before that. And then six years before that, I was doing play by play and doing stuff in the studio before. Like th this stuff was nothing new to me. And it was just like, whatever, cool. I'm sit sure. sitting okay. in the chair. Like I'm, I've, I've been ready for it. You know what I mean? And all right, trust me. I've seen most of your IG posts, seeing you in school, always on point, saying the right swag and all that. So. Tell me about the biggest joy from being a sportscaster. What gives you the joy from doing this right now? Uh, realizing you can do something that makes you happy for a living, which a lot of people don't think you can do. Uh, a lot of people called me unrealistic, called me foolish when I was getting out. Every single day I had to come into work, listen to people say, oh, I think you're making the wrong decision, man. You should really extend. You know, it wants you to be in the public contract. Yeah. I'm like, just because you're scared don't mean I am. That's right. You know, and, um, you know, I think I was... Uh, I think the biggest thing for me is is realizing like like there's a job out there for everybody that will literally pay them to do the thing that they love the most but they don't think that's real because the world's conditioned us to think like we're not supposed to enjoy ourselves for a living not, not supposed to be work a yeah, and exactly and something like that but that's that's not it's not the reality of the situation the reality of the situation is the people that are the happiest are the people that are doing something that they love to do every day for money Right. Like that's how they pay their bills. So sure. I talk about sports or I shoot sports or I edit sports for a living. Yep. You know, I used to do this stuff for free. And then I would do it after a twelve hour shift at work. You know what I'm saying? So I'm what were you doing at twelve what, so what is twelve hour shift was that? Um everywhere. Korea, <laughs> Italy, South Carolina. What was your favorite place you were stationed at? I need to ask you about that one. Italy. That was the first place I was stationed with my wife at. Oh my goodness. Yeah. I, I had That's where I had my son too. So. Oh, okay. That transitioned to my niche. <laughs> like, look at you setting me up like that. I know you're a family man, yeah. wife, beautiful son. Talk to me about balancing family and balancing 12 hour work days, portfolios, having to cut log and do all that type of stuff. Um man, it's uh it's weird because it's like they're your biggest motivators. Sure. So like you can't, I can't really do it without them. Right. Um, but like there, there also is like some like attention and time that I have to give to them as well. But it never really feels like a chore. It just feels like something that I want to do every time I'm doing it. Uh, I'll, I'll be editing a video. And my son's throwing stuff at my nose, <laughs> but I just, I just do what I got to do. You right. know what I mean? And it's really, it's really not that bad. Once people have kids, they'll understand like how much more they're capable of. That you can 
do work while a child is 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 needing you. You you can do that stuff. Like it's not. I'm not gonna sit up here and like uh, like dramatize my situation as if, oh man, I'm doing this in spite of. No, I'm doing this because of, right. of the two of them. Um, I have the most supportive wife in the world, and I have a son that uh, that makes me really proud every time he does something new like that stuff keeps me going I feel like I can do something new he makes me feel young um like you know that I think I think like having a family and doing something like this is actually easier than if I was doing it by myself because I'm more motivated because of the two of them than I was when um you know me and my wife weren't married we were still just dating and Zane wasn't in the picture and all that stuff like you know I'm more motivated now than I've ever been before so like they're, they're the biggest reasons why I'm able to accomplish the stuff I'm able to accomplish. I'm not saying like, go start a family just because. <laughs> I'm just saying like, don't be afraid to start right. one just because you're like, oh, I have stuff I wanna accomplish. I promise you, you can do it with them in the picture as well. They'll help you get there. That's such a dope answer, bro. You're yeah. such a dope answer. Wrestling, I know you will. Yeah, man. Wrestler lover, tell me Not what got you what got you into wrestling before I start getting into all these wrestling man, questions. Look, my dad bought me my first wrestling tape when I was like five. It was WrestleMania 15 on video cassette. Uh, if any wrestling fan, any WWE fan knows what the main event of that one was, but in case you're not, it was the Rock and Stone Cold, their first, right. their first nah, WrestleMania. Nah, 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 nah. Yeah. Uh, so obviously I was hooked after after I saw that and I just haven't stopped watching since I've been over probably 40 shows at this point yeah three WrestleManias um, planning on going to my uh, fourth one in April it's in LA oh, so nice. far um, you know I have connections in WWE now which is really dope because like what right <laughs> you know what I'm saying um, it's, it's I don't, I don't know, man. It's like it's, it's that it's that thing. Everybody has that one thing right. that like that gets you through all your tough times and stuff that you really enjoy. Wrestling's always been there for me, so I'm always trying to get back to, the, to wrestling. Michael and Caleb Bretson, I know you met them. Tell me about the experience when you actually meeting them in man. person, and this ain't no social media thing. Look, I wanted to like part, part of me wanted to fanboy. Like when I met Michael Cole for the first time and stuff like that. Um, but then the other part of me was like, you belong here. Right. Like, just do your thing. So I went up there um, to the panel and I gave him my card. And like, in short terms, I talked my ish. You know what I'm saying? Like, I was like, I was like, I'm, I'm the guy for this job. You guys don't know it yet, but here's my card. Right. Take a look at my reel, all that good stuff. Because I think the, the biggest thing that, um, that I've learned is like, there's nobody or or any room that I don't deserve to be around or be in. I don't care who they are. I don't care if I saw Jay-Z walking down the street. I deserve to have my hand shaken. Right. I'm somebody too. And I think, uh, I think starting out in the business, a lot of people, like, you know, they, they meet people that are more successful and stuff and they feel like, oh, I have to bow down to them and stuff like that. Or like, they're more important to me. No, they're not. Like, they started off somewhere just like you did. They started off broke, <laughs> struggling, college student, trying or, or or you know, uh, you know, if they're artists, they started off as a new artist trying to learn their craft. They weren't born that magnificent. Right. They became that way over years of like applying their craft and hard work and dedication. But nobody's more important than you are. Nobody's more uh you know, I guess like basically you deserve to be looked in the eye when you're being talked to. You deserve to have the attention, um, but you have to like command it. You right. have to see yourself as as somebody that's worthy of that. Like when Dan comes to campus, I talk to him like he's just another faculty member. Yeah, and I seen him today. I shook his hand. I thought that was the world. It it, it is dope. It it really is yeah. dope. Like me and Dan Patrick is no like little deal or anything. It's a big deal. But you'll come to realize, because you'll see him a few yeah. more times while you guys are here, like, he's just a regular dude, man. Yeah. He's just, a, like, he he bleeds, he sweats, he breathes, just like the rest of us do. 
he just so happens to have been doing something successfully for a long period of time. Right. But that doesn't mean that, you know, he's like on this different level as a human being, he's on a different level in the industry. That's right. it. You know what I mean? So like me, every time I see Dan, I'm just going to chat it up. That's it. Um, I told him a dad joke yesterday. Like I don't take things too seriously just because I'm meeting somebody like successful. And that's how I've carried myself because it's like, I think my, my vision of who I want to be when it's all said and done is somebody that's really important. Somebody historic, like a big figure, a big public figure. You're right. I have to see myself as that now. Right. I have to start manifesting that stuff like into myself right now. And if I'm seeing somebody that's more important than me and I'm not worthy of their time or I can't like shake their hand or just have a normal conversation, I'm already losing. So like I have to see myself as their everybody that's come that's come to visit us, I've seen them as my coworker. You're my industry peer. Right. You're not I'm not here to be your biggest fan. I'm not here to be, you know, your uh like fanboying over you and stuff like that. Like, yeah, cool. You're on TV, Jay Harris. Yeah. I'm gonna talk to you just like I talk to any faculty member. Sure. You know what I'm saying? Like, it. You're just a human. You're a human being. Yep. And a lot of them, they respect that. That's exactly what they, they want. want actually, right. they hate talking to the people who are like, oh my god, yeah. you're Jay Harris. Like, bro, I know I'm Jay Harris. Yeah. What's up? Like, let me see your work. Right. You know what I'm saying that's that's what they want. They they want people that are about their business, who know who they are, who know who they want to be, and that's it. So, okay, so I know you call numerous of wrestling matches. Tell me about a memorable event that you call that, you know what I'm saying, somewhere in Florida, something that you call. Um, I'd have to say, like, that the first time calling wrestling was definitely weird. Um, I thought I was going to suck at it. Like, I, I have my own insecurities, too. I, I think I think I'm amazing. I really do. I, I have an ego the size of Mount Rushmore. People don't know that, though. <laughs> they don't need to know that. Right. Like, I show my wife that side because she isn't going to judge me for it. Right. And I bring the humble side mostly to, to the public and stuff. But I yeah. got an ego the size of a, of a mountain, bro. Like, I think I'm, like, God's gift to the world sometimes. But that's, you have to, you gotta you feel, have, that way you have to feel that way or you're not going to perform well. Um, but... That was the one thing, because I love it so much, I was so afraid of screwing it up. And once I got rolling and stuff, I was like, man, this is actually, like, I'm really good at this. Yeah, you were at home and this yeah, was going I, on. I, I was chilling. Uh, so that, that was an experience. That was the one thing where I was like, you know, everybody has that one thing. Like maybe, maybe for you, for example, if you ever got the chance to like be the reporter for the Falcons or something. That's something you would take really seriously because yes. you love Falcons football. Right. You respect it. You you hold it I in like this it. high regard, bro. right? Right. So like you don't want to mess it up. Correct. So you're gonna accidentally see it as like, oh man, I'm not like, oh man, I'm good enough for this. Somebody else will be able to do this more justice. And then you actually do it. And you're like, oh yeah, I'm actually really good at this. What was that? Right. What was I talking about? What exactly. was I thinking about? Uh, so that, that was my first experience with that. Uh, I can't wait for my next experience with that because I know. Um, like, I'll be so much more confident than I was on the first one. So, going back to school, like school assignments. What was your favorite assignment that you that you had to do and present? You know, what I'm saying in the studio, like man, y'all gonna love PB six, bro. I can't I'll tell wait. you that much. Uh, PB six is with Jeff Radcliffe, and he gives a, gives you the opportunity to like really branch out and be as creative as as possible. And. In PB6, I started this wrestling studio show. Yeah. It's called yeah. This Week in Wrestling. You probably saw it. Yeah. And, yeah. Yeah. And, like, I put so many hours into those shows. Like, to come out there, perform for seven minutes, I put 10 hours of work into that show. But, like, but like it's, it sounds like a lot. Yeah. It really sounds like a lot. But I had so much fun in the process. It was just that I looked up and 10 hours were gone. Yeah. You know? It was more like that. It wasn't more like, oh my God. It's, right. It's been Getting 10 long. hours. No, it wasn't like that. It was, oh man, it's been 10 hours. It's yeah. crazy. Well, my show's done. Sure. You know what I mean? And you come in the next day and you knock it out of the park. Um, that's that's the dopest class, I think, overall. Like, And there's a lot of great classes right. here. But that one right there, man, where you, you get a chance to just like really bring your silliness out and stuff, like it's really dope. So this is a personal question from me. I remember we was at the 
behind the scenes, and it was raining that day, and uh, Gus came out there, and you and Gus was chit chatting. Yeah. And he said in the next ten years or so that he could see you running being a course director. Could you see yourself doing that? Absolutely, because I owe everything to the school. The school's the first place that ever believed in me. I've I've been this talented like almost my whole life. But sometimes you need that one person or that one place that believes in you. Like you know, you have a lot of teachers. Like a lot, a lot of uh, find it interesting. A lot of artists. They always say, "Oh, I had this one teacher uh, back in high school who like believed in me and said like I could reach the stars and stuff." And like I took that and I never looked back. And now look, look where I am. Right. You, everybody need, just needs that one person. And Full Sail has been that one place for me where. People immediately heard my talent. Like before I even got here, I was doing like a little IL. Uh, it was Gordy and Debbie actually. Uh, at the time, I didn't know them as well as I do now. So right. like, um, you know, it was me meeting them for the first time. But first thing that Gordy said to said uh, to me was, "Hey man, I really like your voice. If you got a podcast, I'm listening." <laughs> like, I was like, "Oh." Jeez, okay. So that was the first time I was like, oh man, they're like really recognizing like what I'm bringing to the table and stuff. Uh, I don't know why people couldn't see it before, probably because like I wasn't meant to work with them and that's, that's cool. Right. My feelings ain't heard about it now. I'm more so just grateful about the experience that Full Sail has given me. So yes, like anytime I would give back to the school in any way I can. I have plans for that, can't reveal them yet but I do have a lot of stuff I'm if, working if, on. If you would have said a different answer, I would definitely would have disagreed with you. It's a <laughs> definite yes. Yeah, I could, I could see it. I okay, could see so, it for sure. I mean, we had a conversation about, you know, I hear lots and things like that. Of course, so yeah. tell, tell everybody about, you know, our lot, the lot journey and what is, you know, just being ourselves and maintaining who we are is important to you. So when I first got here, my hair was low, not by not because I was coming here. It's not why I cut why I cut my hair. I cut my hair because I didn't like how I was growing. Like I used to have like it was like a fro hawk. It was like uh, okay. out here, yeah. out here. Um, so this this is my second time in my life with long hair. My dad used to cut my hair down all the time when I was little. I used to have him like the military, the military tubes, you know. What I'm saying? Yeah. So uh, <laughs> it's funny as so. hell. Um, I started my lock journey back in February, March of this year and um i'd always told my wife i was like i was like i'm gonna be that dude on tv or maybe not even on tv but just like that public figure that's tatted like from the neck down i already got started yeah but say yeah i, I, just, I got i got small work to do tattoo is expensive bro. right it is um, it is <laughs> but uh i always wanted to be that dude tatted from the neck down long hair but still taking seriously right, say, seriously right uh, and I'm well on my way to doing that. And I remember, you know, you, you had asked me, you were like, uh, you know, hey, should I, should I cut my hair for TV? And I was like, man, if you ever cut your hair for TV, I'm going to come to your station. I'm going to slap the hell out of you. Yeah. And that's real. Don't ever cut your hair for nobody. I don't care who you are. I mean, that doesn't even just apply to black people, anybody. Um, your hair is where your power is, bro. That's your antennas to the universe. That's how you connect with God, bro. Like, it. You ever read the the story of Samson? Like it's, it's real, man. You know, like I'm not even religious, and I believe in that, right. that story, bro. Like the hair hair matters, bro. Yeah. That's where we get our strength from. Like the when your hair is like when you're connected to your hair, you take care of your hair. You're you know like that means something, right? Culturally, that's always meant something throughout throughout culture. Um, yeah, true. Yeah, you got more play here. Never cut your hair for anybody but yourself. If you decide, like, man, this is getting too much to maintain. Yeah. I don't feel like doing this no more. Go ahead, because that's what I did. That's right. that's why I cut it. But I didn't cut it because I was like, man, they're not going to take me seriously. If they're not taking you seriously because of your hair, you're in the wrong place. Find somebody, find a place, find somebody that will accept you for everything that you are. That's where you want to be at. You don't want to be somewhere that's a, that's accepting only half of who you are. Your hair, like, I can already tell with you, your hair is like a big part of who you are. It is. You take care of it, you maintain it, I can tell. Like, that matters, that should never be uh, disrupted for, for anybody. Um, like, locks, 
we're changing the narrative basically right. we're showing that professional um, people look different right they don't all look the same they don't all have buzz cuts right uh, they don't yeah, all that have I'm, done. Yeah. That. <laughs> I'm done with that bro yeah. did that in the military for yeah. six years I'm over that uh you know, they, they don't all have perms and stuff. And no edge curls. Yeah, not, not that's like, bro, just wear your hair. Right. Wear your hair and change the narrative. Like, if you're afraid that people aren't taking it as professional, take it upon yourself to change the narrative. That's what you can do. Right. So, two weeks out, last assignment coming up. What are we going to see next from Afon? Where are Afon's going to wind up at after he uh, graduated from Full Sail? Uh, I'm not 100% sure yet, but... Right. Like I said, I do have a lot of plans in place. Uh, my job that I've been contracting with so far, they've been so good to me that I want to stay for a little while longer. I don't know how long that could be, a year, it could be five. Uh, who knows? I think uh, the biggest thing is like, I know a lot of people are probably expecting me to go straight into TV and stuff. That might not, that might not be the case. That might not be my journey. Um, you know, I, I have plans to start for a wrestling school soon. Um, you know, I have plans to start my nonprofit soon. Like, there's a lot of stuff that I want to have time for that maybe going to a news network won't give me time or the money to be able to do because a lot of these news stations are giving low ball offers. And that's sure. just that's just facts. I can't provide for my family with thirty thousand a year. No. I'm not an eighteen year old kid coming out of college, you know, or nobody coming out of college at eighteen. Um, I'm not. I'm not like. I'm not a kid coming out of high school that can make thirty thousand dollars work and not feel rich. I'm not, no, I'm a twenty-seven year old man with a wife and a child, and three pets that needs like sustainability, financial security. So, you know, my journey might be a little bit different than like the average person's that's coming out of the school, and that's fine. Uh, that's just where I am. I'm. I'm living for. I'm not living for anybody else. You know, I'm living for me first and foremost, me and my family, and then. You know, whatever happens after that happens, but my main goal right now is financial security. That's that's what you I want. It. That's what I want. So uh, I think the like after after college, I'll be around. Um, so I better bother you some more. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I mean, anybody that I've met and extended, you know, the olive branch to at at, at the school or whatever, like I'm, I'm never going anywhere, even if. I do move out of Orlando eventually. Like I'm still here to to help and assist and stuff. So, you know, it, think things don't always go according to plan. That's right. what I've, I've learned to stop like making so many plans and just kind of like go with the, the flow. flow. Right. Yeah. So, what would you tell that new sports caster in his first month in psychology of play? What would you tell him to look forward to in the program? Man? Look forward to everything, man. And Enjoy the time that you're gonna have in this program. It really is one of the best programs ever, and Bats. it's uh, it's worth every se enjoy every second. It, it flies by. It, 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 sometimes you feel like it's going by slow, but to tell you what they told us in basic, the days are long, but the weeks are short. Right. So, just enjoy every second that you have in this program because it really is good, and then it's gone before you know it. So I feel like I just got here, but I'm out of here in two weeks. So. So, AKA 13 days and a wake up, my man's out of here. So, yeah. any shout outs you want to give out to anybody you're thinking about right now, you want to say what's up to? Like, hey, mom. <laughs> I think I want you to play, mom. I call everybody already, so uh, nobody really to say hi to, but just any full self students coming through the Dan Patrick School that need any assistance, um, I'm always willing to share any expertise that I have. If you're struggling with anything in the program, um, you know, I've gotten an A in almost every single class. I think 31 A's, two B's. Uh, one of the B's came in physics. So, like, I've been stomping through this program. I'd love to pay it forward and help out anybody who is also interested in getting that high grade point average. So, y'all you know, just let me know. So, Mr. Fons, I thank you for your time. Of course. Man. Look forward to doing more things and maybe try to beat you in Madden or something like that. Yeah, that's not happening. Oh, I had to get down and see what you <laughs>